G'day and welcome back to Buildsome and as you might be able to see we're back on the site we've got our piece of land here and today what I want to show you is a step-by-step -step, um, build up of a section through a brick veneer slab on ground um, building this is probably the most common method that they use in Sydney uh, currently with all the project homes that are being built uh, and it actually relies on being built on a level block of ground so a lot of jobs first thing that will happen is they come out and they level the site with a grader, a bulldozer, a grader and a laser level get it all nice perfectly level and then they can start to build the house so the first thing they have to do is uh, get the slab poured up so they're going to form up for the concrete slab, form up uh, so they can actually form the recess for this board here in the slab. Take the brickwork, you'll see that as we build it up. And then, uh, depending on how they do it, most of them do a waffle pod uh, slab nowadays. So they'll put the membrane directly on the ground, of course, bringing it up the edge of the formwork, like such. And then they'll put in their waffle pod which is just a, a roughly a metre by a metre square block of foam and that just fills in uh, or creates a void under the slab so we're not using as much concrete but the shape or the pattern that they put in creates uh, beams in between the slab which creates the strength and uh, they can chamfer the corners just to give you strength on the uh, internal corner of the slab so you don't get the shear point. That's one method. The other method is to, before you put the membrane down, put in compacted hardcore fill. And what they normally do is they'll just put this all the way through the site and then they come back later and dig the beams in or dig the trenches into this later. On top of the fill, because this has normally got some sharp rocks in it, they'll put a layer of blinding sand Okay, so this helps you to get the top of the fill uh, exactly uh, level. It also keeps it uh, very smooth and it stops the, uh, the rocks from puncturing holes in the membrane, which will go down next. So your 200 micro, micron polyethylene membrane, commonly called 40 con, it goes across the top and back down the end of the trench and back up onto your formwork as well. Next step is to place your bar chairs and your reinforcement. So we have reinforcement in the footing itself. So there's a cage there, two layers of trench mesh. And we also have a layer of mesh in the concrete slab. Okay, all that will be designed on your plans by your structural engineer. You won't have to worry about too much about what you actually put in there, but you have to have reinforcement. Once the reinforcements all been placed and inspected by the council or the private certifier, you can then pour your concrete slab. And there we go, we've got our floor poured. Uh, after uh, you know, generally about a week is a good amount of time, you can strip the formwork. Uh, of course, you'll still have your um, moisture, uh, your forticon or your uh, membrane there. You want to leave that in as intact as much as possible because uh, eventually you'll backfill against here with uh, with landscaping and, and topsoil. Alright, so that's our floor down. So the next step then is to start our walls. So you're going to, to put your wall in. Of course, your wall's made up of your bottom plate, your common studs that go from top of the wall to the bottom of the wall. Uh, we have our noggins that go between our studs. This opening is a window, so we have a sill, a window sill, and we have a jam stud directly against the window. On the other side here, this one is similar to a common stud, it runs from top to bottom, but again it's associated with the window, so it's referred to as a window stud. And we have our lintel carrying the weight of the opening and our top plate. In most cases nowadays we would have then a ribbon plate and our trusses go on top of that. 
So we've got our roof on, or the frame up anyway. Right, the next job then would be to uh, get your fascia on, uh, whether you use a timber fascia or a metal fascia, it doesn't matter. Fascia goes in next. And the idea is to get the roof on as quick as possible so you've got something to work under. We then put our first couple of tile battens on. So the first batten there you can see is a little bit bigger than the second one. It's called a bell cast batten. And what it does, it kicks the first tile so that the angle of the tile looks the same. If you didn't kick the first tile, the first tile on your roof would look very flat and it just wouldn't look right. So you have a bell cast batten. You should also have what I call an anti-ponding board. This is just a piece of uh, fibro, 4.5mm fibro. It sits across the top of the first two battens. And what that does, it supports the sarking, which goes on next, and just stops it from sagging near the gutter, which means that any moisture that runs down here, well then, once it gets to here, it will definitely run off uh, into the gutter. We then have our tile battens to take our roof and our roof tiles go on there. So that's the, the first stage of the brick veneer slab on ground um, section. In the next video I'll take you through the, the actual bringing up the brickwork and uh, finishing all that off and the, uh, how the insides fitted out.